I paint? Oh, that's a hard question. Why do I paint? Well, I guess because I like to do it. And I want to get better and better at it. And I love what I do, and I like to look at it. In fact, in my will, I have asked as I'm dying in a bed someplace, either here or in a hospital or hospice or whatever, I want all my paintings around me so that I have that view as I'm passing on. So, wow. so I guess it's just, you know, why do you walk? Why do you eat? You know, you just, you do. You don't even think about it. You just do it. My hobby with the band, what we have is a 1960s classic rock cover band, okay? 1960s more or less pop music, I guess you could say. Um, it's what I call my kindergarten music because I was born um, at the very, very end of 1962. So this music that we play in the band, I it's what I would hear when I was just a little kid, like kindergarten, first grade. Well, I am an artist, and I do it as a hobby as well as a freelance. Uh, I say freelance because I tend to do, um, you know, commission from like individuals of friends, families, or just perfect strangers. But as a hobby, it's more of, I'm just, you know, passionately curious, so to speak. And I know that's been said before, but I have to say it again. But it's just, just having that ability to be able to use your mind in ways that best represent yourself. So when it comes to paintings, or whether it become drawings or sculptures, or anything that I can get my hands on, that I can express myself in the best uh, visual method, I just do it, and I, you know, and I love it. Favorite of mine. Cool. This is kind of something that I, I call this one like the Gonzo bird. Because you think of Gonzo from uh, Sesame Street, and then it's got that kind of wackiness to it. But birds themselves, it's like that beak and like the two big eyes. And I, I've been painting them for quite a while, but I've drifted off from it because it was a phase. And I started kind of like leaning towards, you know, characters and stuff. Um, people, uh, faces, uh, women in their images and just kind of like really abstractly as much as I can. And I, I gotta say that I love boobs, but you know, don't get me wrong here, but I don't like it in this most it? fun way. I just want to like throw it off in an abstract way because we know what a boob looks like. But if you throw it off in a different way, it's just your mind plays with you. You, you want to correct it, but you're throwing it off in a way like you understand what it is. And this is one of my first examples of real abstract. And this is, uh, what do we call this? This is called uh, quieting voice. This is to close her mouth and not let her speak. Mm -hmm. It's quieting the voice or something. I have that. Why I did that, I don't know. But we have some Somali women right here in the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And uh, they always seem so docile. Yeah. And I used to go over to the library down here on University Avenue before they made that a Muslim mosque now. Uh -huh. But I used to go down there and get all my books and whatever. And I'd run into all these women. And they would ask me all these questions all the time. And then they turn around and look to see who's watching them. And it just always amazed me. And then they would see somebody, mm -hmm. another, another man of their culture. Mm -hmm. And they would shut up so fast I couldn't believe it. So I just 
always had the feeling that they were always constantly being controlled. And then, of course, I went off to college after high school, and I majored in art uh, because that's what I liked to do and was interested in. And then one day, my second year, my instructor brought me up to the Minneapolis Art Institute with another fellow student and gave us a chance to roam through the school and see how everything was. And, of course, St. Olaf College was very strict. You dress properly, little dickies, little white dickies with your sweaters, and et cetera, et cetera. And I went up to that art school, and here were a lot of these returning vets coming in to the Minneapolis Institute of Art on that GI Bill. And they were in old raggedy sweatshirts and wash pants. And, oh, I said, this has got to be great. So on, on the way back to uh, St. Olaf College, I was talking to my instructor. And he said, well, what do you think? And I said, oh, I love it. And I started that fall. And I'll tell you, that was the best years of my life. I went to art school in the fall and stayed all winter. Left, you know, the end of May. Went up to Rainy Lake and worked on Rainy Lake on an island all summer long. Came back. Got my laundry done, and I went back to art school. And it was the best years of my life. Absolutely. I would love to do it all over again. So I am. I get outside, get up north as much as I can, and I do my paintings. So there you go. I have been playing music for as long as I can remember. I have been singing for as long as I can remember. My mom actually was, um, I'm from a small town in northern Minnesota, and my mom was, I guess what you'd consider the town wedding singer. Anytime somebody got married, they would have my mom sing at their wedding. And so I just grew up surrounded by music. My mom's family is all musicians as well. Um, my dad, on the other hand, couldn't sing his way out of a paper bag if he had to to save his life, but I got my mom's musical talent. So this music that we play in the band, I it's what I would hear when I was just a little kid, like kindergarten, first grade. Um, just really kind of fun music. I would like to get the neighborhood a little bit more involved in this. I've tried to get the neighborhood and a little bit more involved in this. Um, you're right, we do play shows, not right in the general vicinity, um, you know, in the surrounding parts of the Twin Cities. Um, but I haven't really seen many of our neighbors there, except for the lady across the street from me is what we jokingly call the president of our fan club. My next door neighbors, um, Andrew Dawson is the, the name that I had that I always remember and everybody else. Um, I made a painting for him and uh, one of the things that, that I really miss about them is their music. And they play jazz, blues, but mainly jazz. And um, they had like a choir band type boys. Uh, and I just remember like just having the the ability and, and the um the blessing to be able to like be painting while they'd be blurring on a Sunday morning with their music. And they have like the pianos going and the saxophone going. I mean like literally blurring to the point where if I open up that door it was just like extremely loud. And I loved it. And that's just what I needed because I listen to music when I paint, but they already had it, so and it was like pure, and I was hearing every rhythm and every mistake that they were doing, and like while that was happening in painting, it just ties it together, you know. It's just that 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 motion that I miss. More often, see, I like to hear that because I'm not bothered by the sounds of bands practicing or loud music. Um, I actually like it. And so I like to hear stories about people who appreciate it. More often than not, you hear people complaining, ah, oh, turn that music down, I can't stand that, you're too loud. And that's not how I am. I like to hear people who appreciate it and are somewhat inspired by it. We had a, I had a neighbor next door who was a potter. She had a studio, but she was living here. She was renting that place. And then the woman who bought that house was a mystery writer. And I thought, well, isn't this just kind of neat? You know, let's see if we can expand on this. Whatever, a little kind of uh, artistic, creative community. Well, I start checking around. No, nobody, nobody, nobody was interested that we ran into.
and I found my niche in a pool in which I use, which is a putty knife. So this type of style of putty, working on the canvas and giving a feel for it. The wideness of the, uh, the um, you know, the width of the brush strokes and the feeling behind it. I love brushes and I love brush strokes, but there's something about it when you place it onto the canvas that I don't like. So I like a smooth texture to it, but also rough and raw. So with that, I was able to create background and um, emotion, which allowed me to visualize different types of flowers, which is poppies, poppies and you know lilies and any kind of random wildflower that's out there. This model, this particular model is a D1GT. Um, and I had played one of these and it, my heart for some reason was just really set on this one. So what I did was I went to, um, I went to Guitar Center and I just sat down. If you're familiar with Guitar Center at all, they have the rooms, like these closed off rooms where you can just sit and play guitars just for the fun of it, like just to test them out. But um, I grabbed the D1GT first and I played it and I thought this is the guitar that I have to have. And my husband and the sales guy at um, Guitar Center kept bringing me other guitars. Like they would bring me, here, try this one, here, try this one, here, try this one. And I tried them all, but this was absolutely the one that I had to have. This compared to my um, guitar that I had before, the neck is wider, the body is like really, really wide. But in order to get this sound, I mean, it just sounds so beautiful. You have to have that big of a body style. You know, it's called the dreadnought style, and we have to have one that big in order to make the sound come out. But I like the um, the bass sound of it. It needs um, new strings. Those, that's <laughs> no, that's beautiful. Isn't it nice to play? And see, the thing is, too, your hands are just so much better sized for it. I feel like a little kid, like trying to stretch my fingers over this. 